and I go to create my mesh, what I want to do is take a look at the default settings so far. And when you come in initially, you've got this happy fun time slider bar. I call it the happy fun time slider bar because it doesn't tell you anything. How accurate do you want it to be? Three. Yay. How about four? Awesome. Now what is three versus four? Well, it's actually quite a lot of things. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what that is and, and how that works. Uh, but here's that close thin slots option. That is the perfect thing to use for sheet metal if you don't want to have to put a big old box around it. Close thin slots cleans all that up. But I, I don't need to do that, so I'm not going to mess with it. All right, so level of initial mesh, the default value is three. I'm going to jump into the manual mode. In manual mode, it starts wherever you left off. So if you picked five and then jump into manual mode, that's going to be five as a starting point. Now usually a number three, what it does is it gives you a basic mesh, looks about like this, tries to keep the, uh, the squares as, as close to an aspect ratio of one as possible. Uh, usually the default values are two, level of two refinement on narrow channels with a, a characteristic number of cells of five, advanced refinement of four, and tolerance level of five. That's usually the default values, although it'll usually it'll uh, update as you start using it. Uh, it might switch over to a different you know, default starting value. Um, this is a problem, right? Let me talk about what exactly meshing is doing and why it's so problematic. When you do a mesh, you start out with a basic mesh. Each element in that basic mesh is one element, one data point. And if you refine that to level two, you split that in three dire directions, right? So two to the third power is eight. Now, if you were to split all of those again, you would hit 64. Now, that's only two refinement levels up. We're now 64 times bigger and every time you go up another refinement level, your mesh count starts to explode exponentially. This is what can create massive meshes. This is one of the reasons you want to simplify your geometry, but you don't have to do geometry simplification to achieve a, an efficient mesh. And here's the key, we need an efficient mesh. We're not ready for a final solve. This study is not set up and ready to give us that solve that takes all afternoon or all night uh, and gives us a, a, a super accurate result. We don't have confidence in this study at all. So we need a very efficient mesh to start with. Then go back and do things like unsuppress all the components on the circuit board and run it all night and do all that kind of fun stuff. So this is what the meshing dialog looks like, and I'm going to try to explain meshing and mesh controls in flow simulation as a balance between what you want and what you have to offer. So, for example, narrow channels, that's the very first uh, mesh refinement characteristic that you can set. Five is the characteristic number of cells across a channel those uh, slots on the sides of the, the enclosure where I'm going to put my pressure boundaries, those are channels, right? Two opposing faces separated by a gap. So what I'm telling it is I want five elements to, you know, cover that gap opening. Now that's all great, right? It's good to want, right? Wish in one hand and uh, refine in the other. You, you're going to have to refine from your basic mesh a certain number of times to hit that number. How many times do you have to refine? I don't know. But what I've done here is I've said two is the refinement level that I am willing to give. I have two refinement levels to give to the channel refinement strategy. So if you see a channel and it has less than five elements across the channel, refine it up to level two, but no further. Okay, doesn't mean I can't go beyond level two, I just can't from a channel definition. And so what really gets complicated is your elements are going to get meshed based on multiple overlapping criteria, 
that may or may not actually be solved correctly. So let's say that I want five elements across a channel, but I don't have enough refinement levels to achieve that. I could filter the channel types by size, but let's go down to advanced refinement. Usually it starts out where it says small solid feature refinement is at level four. That's significantly smaller uh, of elements, right? Larger refinement level than it is on the channels. To, in fact, to the point where I would almost say you don't need the channels. You could turn that off and it would probably have zero impact on your results. But refinement level four means if I see a sharp corner, I want refined mesh around that sharp corner because that's where flow is going to kind of circle around and kind of hug that corner. So it'll refine it up to four times. The last one that's enabled is down here. This tolerance level is five. If I have a bumpy surface, even just a really small divot, like an embossed text that's just a thousandth of an inch thick, I can go up to a level of five to refine that and get a good mesh around that text.